This is the 20 Minutes of Influence podcast with your host, Greg Jameson. Influencer marketing is the process of identifying, researching, engaging, and supporting the people who create high-impact conversations with your customers. On each episode, I talk with industry leaders, business rock stars, and internet celebrities who contribute their knowledge about influencing others and growing your influence. Welcome to the 20 Minutes of Influence podcast. I'm your host, Greg Jamison. And if you happen to be watching today's episode instead of just listening to it, you'll notice that I have a guest with me. Uh, my guest is Francis Jones. And Francis and I actually met a couple, three weeks ago at a mastermind group out in Las Vegas. Uh, Francis is coming to us from Arizona today, but uh, we, like I said, we, we met in Vegas a few weeks ago and felt like there were some things that we had in common and that we needed to discuss here on a podcast episode. So that, that's what we're all about today. Uh, Francis has basically spent the last eight plus years working with thousands of small businesses to enhance their online marketing. He understands to be successful in marketing, businesses need to create messaging that connects with their audience. As a story brand certified guide and an Infusionsoft certified partner, he is uniquely qualified to blend the power of online marketing and the power of story in a way that helps businesses create a clear message, which helps them increase sales. So welcome, Francis. I am super excited that we were able to get together on this podcast. And go ahead and tell our listeners a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, thanks. I'm excited to be here. And yeah, we, uh, I've enjoyed getting to know you and you know, meeting you at that uh, mastermind. It was awesome. And, and uh, I have uh, spent some time working with businesses. Most businesses struggle to connect with their audience, to create that real connection that drives sales for their business. And so I'm an, a story brand certified guide using the story brand methodology I create messaging and marketing that really connects audiences to the potential companies and, uh, and creates growth and drives growth for their business. And so that's what I spend my time doing. I work with them, uh, helping them figure out their messaging so they can really create that growth in their business. And so I, I love that, that what, you know, what you do and I do, they fit so closely together. Yeah, and obviously story is so, so important uh, and it's actually one of the things that I see a lot of businesses not really take uh, very seriously and, uh, and, and really take it to heart. Uh, but people remember stories so much more than they remember just facts and figures. And it's really a story that helps to. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. And, and what's really interesting about that is the story that we tell is it's even more memorable when we're telling the story of our audience. You know, it, it's, it, it's, uh, it, we, um, we tend to focus on the wrong story if we're not careful, you know, with, with the websites and what you do to help people with their businesses. Uh, if I focus everything on me, if I, I'm the company and Hey, look at me and look what I do. And I've been in business for 80 years and whatever that thing is, people don't really care. The, the, the focus is on our customer, you know, the sweetest uh, word in the English language is their own name. Right. I want to be able to go to a website, read emails, listen to someone talk and have it resonate with me. And if, if everything that I'm telling you is about like the business and I've been doing this forever, that doesn't happen. And so we're, we find that people are telling the wrong story. Like we like what's going to what's going to really pique the interest of the buyer is, is really what it comes down to. We have to try and understand our audience better. And that's what that's what is really missing in most marketing today is that. We aren't focused on the audience. We're focused on ourselves. Yeah. In fact, I see so many websites that when I first start working with people that their home page is really the about us page. Right. Right. Which makes no sense at all. You know, when somebody comes to your website, uh, they want to hear what's in it for me. They really don't care that you've been in business for 80 years and that you've got 20 people on staff or whatever it is that uh, you're telling them. Mm -hmm. Now, e even when you do have an About Us page, which I actually think that uh, is important, 
to have, not just to appease the business owner, but I think that some customers actually do uh, care a little bit about the About Us page, but it should still be about how your story affects your customer. Right, right. The About Us page is really still about your customers. Like if I said, KHJ Consulting, KHJ Consulting is my company. That's the name of my business. And uh, KHJ is my dad's initial. And my dad was my kind of my mentor, my hero. I love my dad. He passed away from cancer a few years ago. And that's why I named the company what I named it, right? And so, it, listen, if you knew my dad, you'd love him. But nobody cares about why I named my company KHJ Consulting, right? So on my About Us page, I would say, listen, I really, I want to help. Like, I, I found that there's a big gap in the market that people were struggling to uh, connect with their audience, that they were struggling to grow their business because they were, they didn't understand how to tell the right story. And so I created a process or I utilize a process that helps people do this. Like, like it's not really about me. It's still about my audience, right? They don't, I mean, it's nice at some level, like if you and I were talking face to face and we were ready to take our relationship to the next level. Yeah. Why did you name the company KHA Consulting? But that's not what people are asking. The About Us page, the, the, the focus has to be on the customer still. So we really need to focus on why did I go into business and why do I do what I do versus why I named the business what I named it. Um, there is a place for those things. But, but if someone specifically says, why did you name it KHJ Consulting? Great, then I'll tell them. But if they, if they want to know about KHJ Consulting, I'm going to talk all about my customers and how I fit into my customers. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, and... You know, it's really the type of thing where every single page on your website needs to uh, follow that format. There's, uh, you know, s some legal pages that are sometimes required, like a terms and conditions page. Right. And the terms and conditions page, what I like to tell people is that don't even call it terms and conditions unless uh, your lawyer has told you to do that. Right. It's really, why should you do business with me? Yeah, it's yeah. not why shouldn't you do business with me, which is what right. most terms and conditions. Yeah, are. let me warn you about all the problems you might have with me and why I'm not responsible for those. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what we know is the, the human mind is is wired to do a couple things: survive and thrive, and to conserve calories. Right. That's just who we are. So the the human mind, we have to be able to quickly interpret how this is going to help me grow and get ahead in life. And I, I have to be able to do it without burning too many calories. If I go to your website and I have to think too much about what you do, I'm going to bounce. Like I just can't do it. There's just too much going on. So we need to very quickly be able to convince them that yes, you're going to be able to help me get ahead. You're going to be able to help me do more. And we do that easily by making sure that the story we're telling is that of our customers. So it really, it, it just reinforces that idea. Okay, so you've got a story, it, you, you know you want to talk about your customers, but how do you really get their story and be able to tell it? Because, I mean, you, you know who your customers are, and you mm -hmm. have some kind of a relationship with them, but it seems like your customers are able to tell their story better than you are. Yeah, that's a great question. So the focus isn't so much on, like, well, Jan made two trips to the grocery store today and she, her daughter was crying. And it's not really about that day-to-day -day story of our customers, but hopefully, at least for established business owners, they should know about their customers, even if it's subconscious. Like they should know what kinds of things do I hear from my customers all the time. When I'm talking to them, when I'm interacting with them, when I'm at conferences, when I'm reading reviews on my website you went into business for a reason. Like anyone out here who's listening to this podcast who started a business, I doubt very much you're like, I think it'd be cool to sell uh, a dining room chairs. I think I, like, I, don't, I don't have any interest in it. I don't know why someone would want it, but I, I want to make it, right? Most people who start a business, they start with a problem and say, you know what? This, this, I, I can fix this. I can fix this problem. So inherently, we know what that problem is. And so uh, there's a framework out there, and I use StoryBrand, but it, it exists in lots of different forms, where you really have to kind of either literally, well, not literally, because you're not going to pick their brains literally, but you either need to get there, get in front of your audience and ask them questions like, hey, tell me why you did business with us. 
Like what was missing in your life before? Like for instance, you, you help people with their the Amazon, with their websites and, and their e-commerce platform, right? Yep. Right. Yes. Right. And so, so there's a, there's a problem. Like when they come to you, they've got a problem and you know what that problem is. They, they have a product they want to sell, but they don't have a great online presence. They don't have the technological background to build it themselves. They're intimidated by the whole process, right? Does that yep. sound about right? That's pretty much um, it. <laughs> so, and, but that's the story you're going to tell. You're going to say to someone like, listen, I understand what it's like to be overwhelmed and intimidated through in this world of e-commerce. Like, I know what it's like. I've been there. I've worked with hundreds or thousands of people just like you, and I can help. Does that make sense? So, it, so the fact that you're in business and you're doing business and you created a solution to a problem, you, you inherently know what their story is. I, I mean, I, I don't want to be uh, too blunt about it, but how many of your customers are really different from one another? Aren't they all about the same? Well, they come to you with just about 80%. <laughs> I mean, no, there's outliers, but most of your customers come to you because they're struggling with the same problem. And so you know the story, you, you are the generic you, right? You know the story. You just have to find a way to articulate that story. And it isn't like once upon a time, John wanted to build a website. John wanted, a, it's not like that kind of story. It is, it is, what we do is we cre help people. We, we want as business owners to know what is it that our people want from us? What do our customers want from us? What's stopping them from getting it? Like, why can't they get it? Like they want to be able to sell their stuff online for you. So your audience may say, I want to be able to sell stuff online, but I don't know how to do it. Now, how does that make them feel? That's the, that's the big one right there. If you can relay that you understand how someone feels about the problem they're having, you've got them for life. People don't buy the best product or service. They buy the product or service that's best described to them using words that connect. Does that make sense? So it doesn't matter if you sell the best product for the best price. It matters whether you create that connection that makes it easy for someone to understand why your solution is the way to go. Does that make sense? Yeah, it absolutely does. And I think one of the things that, uh, as it relates to all of that about getting your customers to tell their stories that I see is to actually get them to tell their story, you know, have them create some kind of a testimonial for you. Yeah. And uh, don't put it on a page called testimonials, put a different one on every single page of your website so that you're really yeah. conveying that to uh, potential customers over and over again. Absolutely. And the thing that's interesting about that too, Greg, is that if you look at the uh, type of testimonials you get, think about like, listen to the two differences in these testimonials. Greg's a great guy. He was so helpful. His work is so good. Uh, I really like Greg. You should use Greg. Just him, him and his company did an amazing job for me. That's one testimonial. Another testimonial is I was lost. I didn't know what I was doing. I wanted to sell my product. I knew I had a good product, but I didn't know how to do it. And now that Greg has built my site, now that Greg has helped me, I'm selling more than I ever have. Which of those two testimonials is more impactful? Yeah, the second one by far. The second one, of course. And so your testimonials need to focus on life before they used you or used your product and life after. It's always nice to hear how great you are. I love it when people say, Francis, you're amazing, you're smart, you're handsome and thin, all that stuff. You know, some of that may be uh, made up. But anyway. Um, I love to hear those things, but no one else cares. They don't care that Francis is fun and he's funny and he's nice. And even the attention to detail stuff, what they want to see is themselves in the testimonial. They want to see what was life like before they used Greg and what was life like after they used Greg. And that's what we want the testimonials to be focused on. And they're, they're not eight pages long. And quite frankly, you don't need a hundred of them. Sometimes I go to websites and I see, see more testimonials and there's like 80 testimonials. You know, we were at that Malincheck event. I love James. I think he does a great job. But there's so many testimonials. How many of those are actually going to be viewed? I mean, you have like 80 testimonials on there. No one's going to go through 80 testimonials. You'll read through a few and then you'll be like, okay, this guy's legit. And then you're going to move on. So don't spend your time trying to get hundreds of referrals through your website. Uh, I don't know if you have a different opinion about that, uh, uh, Greg, but it, it, people, are, it, people are just going to, they're not going to read that many of them. So get some really solid testimonials. Uh, Don Miller and StoryBrand, if you go to his website, he's got four testimonials, and it's the same four testimonials he's had since he started his company, and it, they work. Yeah, no, you, the, you're absolutely right that people aren't going to read 80 of them. Uh, what does happen just in terms of 
a, a credibility factor, especially if somebody's really trying to sell stuff online uh, and they've got uh, reviews on Google and Facebook and Yelp and so forth. Yeah, yeah, that and that's a, you are correct. That's a different that's a different animal when you're talking about like especially reviews of your products. Like if you're selling any like I'm a I'm an information marketer guy. I, I I sell information like and so mine's a different thing. And so but if I'm selling a widget and, and I need to have reviews of that widget. It's more about the widget than it is about the company as a whole. Does that make sense? Right. So you're absolutely correct. From an e-commerce perspective, like if I go to Amazon and there's one review on a product, I'm not going to buy it. I need to see 100 reviews, 150 reviews. I need to see, you know, some pros and cons. So you're absolutely correct. And thank you for that delineation because that is a big difference. Yeah. And, and it seems like, you know, on those Amazon reviews, like, there's some products that, you know, may, maybe have 2,000 reviews. You aren't going to read 2,000 reviews. No. What you are going to do those. You're going to look and say, you know, out of 2,000 people, uh, this is averaging four and a half stars. That's probably a pretty That's good a, product that I'm yeah, going to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was referring more to the testimonies of the company as a whole as opposed to the product or service. And so you're absolutely correct. The, 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 that social proof of, well, I'm not the only person to buy this. You know, I've got these AirPods, right? And they're, I love them. I've had them for a few weeks, um, but they're expensive. And I don't like to spend money on technology. So I bought some imitation AirPods um, for like $35 a few, like uh, nine months ago. They were the worst, but I, I, but I didn't read any reviews. So I'm like, oh, these will be good. Uh, they'll do, they won't be as good, but no, nah, they didn't connect to anything. You couldn't hear me. I couldn't hear sound. They kept dropping the Bluetooth. It was terrible, right? So you want those to take time to use I would have it was an awful product. Yep. Totally agree. So uh, we need to take a quick break here. Yes. On the other side of the break, what I want to do is we, we've talked about a lot of kind of general things here as it relates to bringing out your customer's story. On the other side of the break, I want to actually get into some specifics of how it is that you help people do that with uh, your story brand. So oh, great. Cool. Let's, let's take a quick break and we'll be right back. Okay. Hi, I'm Greg Jamison, the host of the 20 Minutes of Influence podcast. Every week, I not only have the opportunity, but the real privilege of interviewing experts in their field true thought leaders, and I get to share this information with you. The purpose of this is really to help you sell more of your products and services online, which is the core premise of my primary business, Web Stores Limited. At Web Stores, we go out and we create e-commerce websites for small businesses. Plus, we do internet marketing and digital advertising for those businesses to really help them sell more online. We have a whole number of resources and tools designed to help make this process easier for businesses, probably much like yours. I've been the author of several number one best-selling books, including Amazon's Dirty Little Secrets and The Influencer Effect, plus a whole series of online courses if you want to learn how to do this stuff yourself. The best way to remain in contact with me, besides subscribing to this podcast, of course, is to simply go to gregjamison.com forward slash free gift, where I have a special offer for you simply because you are a valued listener to this podcast. Thanks again. And now let's get back to today's episode. Welcome back to the 20 Minutes of Influence podcast. My host today is Francis Jones. And right before the break, Francis and I were talking about the power of storytelling. And we talked a lot about uh, kind of general concepts here. What I want to do now is really uh, dig in with Francis on how he works with customers to help them uh, actually bring out the stories that they are going to tell utilizing uh, his methodology with story brand or any other uh, ways that you help your customers. So 
Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So when I work with my customers, I, um, hang on one second here. Okay. So when I work with customers, uh, what I do is I try and get to the core of who their audience is. You mentioned before, like, I don't know the story of my customer. It's really interesting is uh, for most people, we, you and I are a little different because our business is doing this. But for most people, 95% of businesses, they didn't get into business to market. They didn't get in business to write email copy or to create a website unless that happens to be their business. Most people got in business or started a business because they saw a need and marketing and website design and, and building an e-commerce, that's all a necessary evil to them. They don't have any interest, time, or um, skill at doing that, right? And anything is learnable. Like this world functions on two form of, forms of currency, time and money. You either have to spend the time to learn how to do it or you're going to have to pay to have someone contribute to that, right? And so what I do is I go in and help companies figure out who their audience is. What do they, what's their audience want? What are they struggling with? How does that make them feel? And then we together, I, I create a plan and we you know, map out their websites, we, you know, create email copy, whatever we need to do to help them uh, create a closer connection with their audience. I mean, if you think about it, if you've ever gone to a, a party or a gathering, when you meet someone, uh, people fall into one of two categories, either that person really made an impression or a connection with me, and, and or that person didn't, they were like, kind of, eh, and we want to be in that former. We want to be in that category where we make that connection. And so that happens through this process. And I, I use a story brand methodology. But as I mentioned, there's other ways to do it. I just happen to prefer the way it's laid out and the framework. And, and so that's what I help my customers do. And so uh, I have a lot of fun. It's just a lot of fun to dig in with people on what their messaging is. What are they struggling with? How do they connect with their audience? How does that impact their website? You know, that's what you do for your customers as well. It's really an interesting uh, experience. And for those customers that don't have any interest or time to do it, which is most business owners, that's where a guy like me comes in, where I can help them really streamline. The other thing is you probably know, uh, Greg, is, is having an outside set of eyes. Um, especially when you're dealing with a product, like a physical product or a, ten, a product you're selling online, you know, we get so caught up in this world of like, well, of course it makes sense. Whereas our audience is like, slow down, big boy, like, uh, like break it down to be like, I have an infant, right? Um, and so having an outside set of eyes can be helpful to really help strip away some of the insider language, insider speak, um, and really look at it from a layperson's perspective, because generally speaking, we're not selling to people who understand what we do. Like for, for what you do in building websites, they may not know much about WordPress and about uh, themes and about plugins and about you know, the e-commerce platforms and WooCommerce and Stripe and the payment, you know, payment gateways. If you start using all that technical language, then they're like, uh, they're gonna bounce, they're gonna go away. And so we have to, so having an outside perspective to come in and say, hey, listen, you need to strip that away and say, it's just a way for you to take payments, a way for me people to pay for their products and services, right? So uh, that's what I help my customers do, and it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy doing it. Okay, so let's take a, a very specific example here. Earlier, you brought up dining room chairs. Yes. So let, let's say we want to sell some dining room chairs online. And uh, clearly, you can go out there on your product page and take a picture of your dining room chairs, and you can say this chair is 18 inches high, and uh, you know it's made out of uh, walnut, and it's got a foam pad on it, and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, is that what you would put into the product description, or would you put in something about? You know, this appeals to... Yeah, that's a great, that's a great question. Great analogy, right? So the product page, of course, you're going to have the specifications. Because if I, like, you can't see my dining room table that I'm sitting at right now, but it's a, it's got eight chairs at it. And it's, you know, it's maybe, I've got maybe 16 inch chairs or in terms of height off the ground. That kind of stuff is important, but that's more like, hey, once someone's decided that this is the chair for them, then we're going to make sure we have the right size chair. But if we start throwing walnut and it's brown and it's 18 inches and it's a high back and it has padding, we're, we're not addressing the story. Like, why do I want this dining room chair? Is it about the impression I want to make on my friends? Is it about being gathering around as a family? Well, I'll tell you quite frankly, the table we have in here, 
that seats eight. I've got six kids. I've got five kids. I say six because my son's married. So we have six kids now. And we want to be able to sit together as a family. And so if you're going to sell me dining room chairs, you probably need to address at least on that level, like why would I want a dining room chair? So you can get together as friends and family so you can enjoy each other's company. Because I have to ask you this, Greg, have you ever been in an environment where there weren't enough chairs? Yeah, <laughs> it's, 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 it's okay if it's like a Super Bowl party or something like that. But in terms of like a dining room, like the dining, like formal dining room, you want to have chairs that, that are comfortable and that people want to be in the room. You, you don't want to have a dining room that people can't wait to leave, right? You have a dining room because you want to gather together and enjoy family. So when you're selling dining room chairs, you're not selling dining room chairs. I can get dining room chairs anyway, anywhere. So if I go to a website and you're selling me a family experience and you're selling me time with my family and enjoying spending time together, that's the chair I'm going to buy. Does that make sense? It, it absolutely does. And I'm, I'm so glad that the, uh, we're on the same page here because that's what I try to convey to my clients is that the description of your product, it's not about the technical stuff. It's not about how it's made. It's not about the materials that are in it. That goes into the specifications tab. The description itself needs to be a narrative about why your customer would select that product in the first place. And yeah, furniture is a no-brainer. Like, if you go to any furniture selling website, you should have very little mention of furniture. Like, it's not about furniture. Like, I, I think I told you this when we were at that mastermind. It, you know what CarMax is, right? The, the used car dealer. Yep. Um, if you've ever seen a CarMax commercial on television, there's one thing that's really conspicuously absent from CarMax commercials. It's cars because CarMax isn't selling cars. I can get a used car anywhere. CarMax understands how much people hate buying a used car. And so what CarMax has done is built an entire marketing and advertising campaign on the experience of buying a car. Our sales reps are salaried. Not, they're, not, uh, they're not commissioned. So they don't try and bump the price up. The, our pricing is set, so there's no haggling. You're not going to be here for hours while you go back and get the best price possible. I have a 26-point checkpoint guarantee, which means you're not going to get a lemon. I have a three-day return policy. So they've taken every objection from their customers, and they've worked it into their marketing without ever once mentioning the cars. They don't talk about the, this you know, selection of Mustangs they have and these big trucks that they have because they know people hate the car buying experience. So when we talk about furniture or cars or things like that, it's not about the product. I, unless you have a product that is truly unique. Like I have, I have a client of mine who sells water softeners. And most water softeners are salt-based. They're salt water softeners. He has what is called a polyhull that does something about combining ions and blah. I don't, I don't understand the technical side. You know why I don't understand the technical side? I don't care about the technical side because the client doesn't care about the technical side. The client cares about what the product does. Now, it happens to be the only one of its kind, right? So that, okay, they can't just go anywhere to get that. But by and large, with most of what we do, are there other people that can build websites and help them sell on Amazon, Greg, besides you? Not as well as me. I didn't ask that. I said, are there other people that do it? Yeah, obviously. Of course, there are other people that do it. And so you're not, not selling you're not selling website services. You're not selling Amazon. You're selling your, 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 your website, your messaging is about the problems that it solves for them. Like how do I solve your problem? Not what is my product? And so we have to be really careful about whatever it is we're doing, chairs, furniture, cars, uh, marketing services like I sell, website services, is that they can get that anywhere. Why would they choose me over someone else? Because I'm telling their story. Because they can go to my website and they say, this guy gets me. He understands what I'm struggling with. He understands what I'm going through. Sorry, my dog is seeing a neighbor outside. So he's <laughs> playing in the blinds if you hear that in the background. But it is, uh, that's, what, that's what people, that's what resonates with people. That's, uh, that is what absolutely drives people. Yeah, as you were talking about that, it reminded me of the story that James told us at that mastermind group about buying a car and how he went to buy a car and there was the salesman sitting there telling him about the number of pistons and uh, right. the horsepower in this thing and all of that stuff. And he was like, I don't care. You know, the way you need to sell me this car is throw me the keys, put the top down, take it for a spin out on the I-10. If you're pulled up to a stoplight or whatever, have your 
uh, buddy salesperson oh, yeah, yeah. Next to you and say, dude, you look really sweet in that car, or nice right. ride or whatever, and, and then pull away. And the guy would, you know, th you're selling to the emotions at that point. Right. Right. It's not the, it's not the, it's not the features of the product. It is, it is the benefits, but it's how the benefits play into their life. And so right. it's, it's all about those things. So you're absolutely correct. That's a great analogy. So uh, let's get back to the dining room table thing here yeah. or the dining room chairs, uh, utilizing your methodology. What are the steps that you would take someone through to come up with, uh, how they should actually be selling. Yeah, so what I do is I walk through, it's a seven point framework that I walk them through is really is, even though we, have a, we think we have a pretty good idea of the, what they want and what they need, uh, we, don't, we, don't, we wanna ask the question. So I, I go through it with the customers because I don't presume to know, even though I have a pretty good idea because I consume dining room chairs, I have them. I have a two sets, you know, and, and I've used them my whole life, right? So I have a pretty good idea, but this is their business. So I ask them a bunch of questions. Really, it's about pulling the information out of them, and then I go into my little, you know, my little uh, lab, and I put everything together. And so it's less about them and more about what I do. But anyway, so if I go in and take the, um, I go and ask them about their customers. What is the problem they're having? Like, why can't they get it? Like, people want a place to meet and gather, and they want uh, something that's comfortable, and they want to stay together, right? And want to stay in the room together. Well, what's stopping you from getting it? I, I, there's too many choices out there. I don't know where to look. I don't know, you know, what, how, I, maybe it's too expensive. I don't know. How does it make you feel? It makes me feel like I don't, like I'm, 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 gonna, I'm missing out. Like we're not getting together, we're losing that time together, right? So I walk them through those steps. The other big part of it we haven't talked about is that is a really crystal clear call to action. Like, what is it you want people to do? It's too many times I go to websites and I, I'm not sure what action you actually want me to take. Like, what is it you're trying to get me to do? We need to make it so stupid simple for people to take action. And so many times on websites, as you well know, because you deal with websites all day long, it's like we've buried the, the action or we haven't been clear about the action. Like they say, you know, get started or learn more. What does that mean? Like, like if you want me to buy a dining room chair, well, then say, you know, browse our dining room chairs or buy a dining room chair. Like be really crystal clear on that call to action. So I walk through that process with them. And then I would produce a kind of a messaging standard. Like we want everything we do to be in line, our email copy, our websites, landing pages, um, our conversations, our booths, if we're at conventions, everything needs to be in line or one liner. And so I create a messaging standard that helps them so that whenever they're writing email copy or their website changes or landing pages, they can go back to the standard and say, yeah, we are, we are, we've, we've stayed true to who our customer is and what we're going to do for them. Does that make sense? So what happens is it's too easy. They fall back into old patterns and old habits. And so I create a messaging standard for them that we'll use to wireframe their website, to write their emails, so that everything is, it coalesces around this one idea of who our customer is and what their story is. And then depending on what they want me to do, I, 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 I could build websites, although that's not my preference. Um, it is really about the message itself. It's about the messaging itself. It's about really creating um, what they're supposed to be saying. Awesome stuff. So what uh, kind of final words of advice would you give to someone listening to this podcast in terms of what it is that they should be doing? They should be focusing on their customers. So what I would, if I was talking to somebody, if I was talking to any of you listening to this podcast face to face, if we were in a gathering, I would say, look at your marketing. Where is the focus? Is the focus... Uh, in uh, on you or is it on your customer am I speaking about my product my dining room chairs or am I speaking about my customers and their desire to have something that would utilize my dining room chairs so I would in invite anyone within earshot of this podcast look at your website does it match what you your audience is looking for does it tell their story or does it tell your story and really uh, focus try and focus on what they're looking for and what they're doing um, what your audience is looking for, what your audience is doing. And so, um, and it's doable. Anyone can do it. You just have to take the time to do it. And so uh, it's stepping back from your business. I know it's hard. Oh man, I, I know it's hard. I'm a business owner. Uh, you're a business owner. It's hard to step away. But if you really want to create a deeper connection with your audience, then you're going to want to step back and really analyze the words that are on the page 
and analyze the emails that are going out and where's the focus on those and really make some adjustments. And whether you do that on your own or whether you do that through someone like Greg for the website or me for the messaging, uh, it, it, uh, just you gotta do something. Just don't, the only bad answer is to do nothing, right? And so whether you wanna learn how to do it because you're on a tighter budget, you're bootstrapping, great. There's some great resources out there. One that I think I mentioned to you, Greg, is it's called mystorybrand.com. And uh, it's got a tool, an online interactive tool that you can type in and answer these questions that we've been talking about this whole time. Uh, you are gonna get some marketing literature from StoryBrand, but it's a free tool. You can opt out of the marketing and still have the uh, tool itself, mystorybrand.com. It's a great free resource where you can collect all your thoughts uh, and go through this process that then you can use to build out your website. Uh, the other option you have is to reach out to someone like myself and uh, if you go to my website at khjconsulting.net, and um, there's a place where you can schedule some time with me. I, we can get on a call, I can look at your website, and we can talk about what you need and how that goes. If you've already got that stuff figured out, uh, I know Greg, you can help them with the execution on that in their website as well. Um, so um, that's, that's the next steps, is to just do something. In baby steps, they don't have to be massive steps. I'm not talking about trashing your website and starting from scratch although that may be necessary, it's really more about creating movement forward. Great stuff. I will make sure that I get both of those uh, domains on the show notes, the mystorybrand.com and the KHJ Consulting. Uh, so we'll make sure that that's in the show notes with links. And I just really want to thank you for taking the time to you know, be with us here today, Francis. It's been great. No, I appreciate you having me. I, I love talking about the story and messaging. It's a lot of fun for me, you know, and it was great to get to know you and great to be here in front of you and your audience. Thanks so much for the opportunity. You bet. Talk soon. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening to today's episode of 20 Minutes of Influence. If you enjoyed today's podcast, please leave a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcast. And if you are interested in booking myself as a speaker at one of your events or are interested in any of my coaching programs, please visit gregjamison.com.